Today we're going to review every book from Amazon Original Series Collection, The Far Reaches. So the tagline for the Far Reaches collection is that the universe is larger than we can imagine. I'm expecting stories that push the boundaries of space or travel or humans place within the universe. How It Unfolds by James S.A. Corey. He wrote the entire Expanse series. I've only ever seen the sci-fi original TV show, but I really want to read the books based off of what we get in that TV show adaptation. And I'm extremely excited to be able to dive into some of Corey's work on the Kindle Unlimited. How it unfolds lives up to the potential and expectation that I had set as Corey as an author. I think he does a phenomenal job balancing this larger tech aspirational colonization kind of thing with an interpersonal drama that sort of like gives more heart and humanity to the situation as whole. Structure wise the chapters alternate from giving these little snippets of the larger universe like what other colonies are doing, whether they survived or died, focusing in on one of the Roy's who exists in the universe and what they're doing at this moment and where their relationships are at. The science fiction concept made sense to me and seemed like it could work in theory. Granted I'm not a sciencey girly so so for me to be calling something out as unrealistic or basically magic in space means it's pretty poorly founded, but it does feel like a real thing that we could discover and make happen, so that made me happy. Since we're literally sending copies of people and resources out to far reaches of space that might actually be able to sustain human life and let us set up colonies way out there, totally lives up to the far reaches idea because it balances like a well-grounded tech element with this human core. It also is an excellent first entry into the series because it sets us up for what we're going to expect going forward. And the story itself is about this guy Roy who is working with his ex-wife and their divorce was not entirely mutual like Roy doesn't understand why they got divorced and he doesn't know why they can't get married again. He's sort of trying to reforge that relationship with her. But in like the least creepy and obsessive ways that someone could do that. The story ends on the strongest note it can being part hopeful, part melancholy, just like this beautiful bittersweet milieu that kind of explains what happens when you are sort of pushing the boundaries of what people can do and how we can exist. Moving into Void by Veronica Roth. So Veronica Roth does have an entry in the forward collection called Ark that I kinda hated. Ark as a story is pretty contrived. And honestly, I was bummed out to see that we'd given her a second chance in this collection because I'm sort of underwhelmed by Veronica Roth as an author in general. But I liked this one. Full transparency, I think the concept of the redundancy as a ship that travels across all the colonies of space and does it in a way that makes time relative. So like for the crew, a couple months have passed, but in the rest of the larger galaxy, it's been like a hundred years, is an interesting concept that removes the redundancy from every everything else in space, but also sort of like isolates and removes the crew and it makes you wonder about why you would take this kind of job. Something has gone really wrong in most of the crew's life and that's why they're here. And as far as the passengers go, most of them, their whole family is like moving to another place. It's still kind of a gamble when you think about like just because something was going well when you started the journey, they might be in the middle of like a war when you pop out of space and land at your destination. But I mean, I guess that's like a risk that you might have to take. Now that I'm done talking about the concept, which is very the far reaches themed and actually fits with the collection, the whole actual plot is a noir style murder mystery story. And it has this cutesy element where the janitor is like imitating a TV show detective to do her sleuthing, which I personally did not like. To me, the perpetrator of the murder was obvious from the jump. The steps that we took to find that information out was kind of rote and basic, and also because it's Veronica Roth, we shoved in an unnecessary out of nowhere romance between our main character and somebody else. But if we're talking about like the actual concept of this ship, 
and its travel and its isolation and what that might mean to everyone. I really liked that. And I thought the writing was decent, significantly better than what we saw in ARC. So overall, I think it's like a fun sort of story that I might happily read on the beach or do as a vacation read, but it's not a deep thinker. And it definitely doesn't 100% follow up on the promise that we got from how it unfolds. Next is Falling Bodies by Rebecca Roanhorse. I want to stress that the writing in this story is really good, as is the characterization, and it made me significantly more interested in picking up some of Rebecca Roanhorse's other things that have been floating on my TBR, like Trail of Lightning and Black Sun. But Falling Bodies itself is like a complicated look at human-alien relationships when it appears like aliens might have at one point in time, or possibly currently, are the invaders on Earth, and it seems like they might be taking Earth's resources to sustain themselves. This is all like question mark because we don't really get a good look at human alien relationships and we also don't get a look at their origin. We do know they're trying to do some kind of peace treaty right now and that there is an extremist group that's unhappy about that and that also it feels like maybe the aliens don't have to do some kind of peace treaty because they've like won and crushed the human spirit and there's like just not a lot that they have to surrender or negotiate. It can all be their way if they want it to be. So the fact that they're negotiating it all kind of implies that they do want a true and lasting peace and that perhaps their invasion was some sort of mistake or misunderstanding. I don't know, that's like some complicated thing that's happening in the background that you're sort of like trying to parse out and understand because it's very relevant to our main character who is a human boy who got adopted by these aliens, did something terrible, and is getting like a second chance on a space station to go to college like a normal kid would. Falling Bodies does a great job really making you empathize with our main character, really feeling like an outsider from life on the station, humanity, the aliens he was raised by. It makes you feel like he was used, he was hyper focused on, but also forgotten by the system like at the same time. And it does an excellent job of making someone who's probably 18 or 21 feel in a lot of ways like mentally like a child. Part of the reason I didn't personally care for this story story is because I was listening to it on audio and the aliens are called the genteel. On audio sounds a lot like gentile, which gentile is a word for someone who's not Jewish. And that made me wonder if there was some kind of like anti-Semitic message underneath the surface. And once I started looking at it from an interracial perspective, it made me wonder if like the adoption of this kid was a metaphor for interracial adoption. Adoption. And if that's the case, then I didn't like what was being said. Interracial adoption is obviously like a heavily nuanced topic with a lot of points to talk about and carry over, but I just don't think that this story does that justice. And then once I looked it up and realized that it was genteel, not gentile, that made me go back to the drawing board and be like, okay, so what else could this story be saying? And I was wondering if maybe it was about exploiting children for political benefits or monetary benefits the way you might see on child family boards blogs, or even like the way people sort of hound celebrity children, and just how that's generally bad and leads to awful outcomes. And from that perspective, it's a significantly better take. But I couldn't get that original bad taste out of my mouth, which is not really the story's fault, except that they did choose a name that would sound very similar to another word in our English language, and maybe that should have been something that was taken into consideration. It's like a compact story. It's probably the first story that I can see like some direct metaphors and allegories to things that are happening in our world today. And in fact, I think it's the only story that does that, at least from my perspective, which gives it sort of a special place. And also this story is significantly dark darker than anything that's come before it. And it's sort of like creating a sharp turn in where we're going in the far reaches and what it might mean to be out there alone. Next is going to be The Long Game by Anne Leckie. 
I loved this story. It starts us off from an alien perspective and it takes a little while for us as readers to figure out what's going on. Who are these aliens? What are their sizes? What planet are they on? How long do they live? What their general intelligence level is? Like it's all stuff you're trying to figure out based off of this alien's narration right now. And also you're trying to figure out like if this is a cultural difference or an intelligence difference, like what exactly is going on and why. We come to a point where they actually interact with a human being. The human are on this alien planet to gather resources and they accidentally discover this intelligent life and they're trying to please the people back home by making them think that this is like a mutually beneficial relationship when it seems like they're just kind of using the aliens and taking advantage of the fact that they're short-lived to keep doing what they want and affecting things the way they'd like. And this one like head honcho alien becomes obsessed with the idea of not dying and comes up with a plan to see a whole bunch of things through. And I just loved all of the development, the process to get there, what these plans looked like, what kind of characters you were dealing with, the whole nine yards. It was just a really fun romp. And I'm rooting for the aliens the whole way. As far as Long Game's place within the collection, I do like that this is a flip on the human-alien relations that we just saw in Falling Bodies instead of the aliens being on top and the humans being subjugated. Now we've got like the alien perspective so we're still seeing from the subjugated person's point of view and the humans doing the subjugating or the taking advantage of depending on how you want to frame it but i liked how that turnabout could be fair play and how the same way the aliens in the last story went out looking for more resources and end up doing some damage to humanity humanity went out looking for resources in this story and is manipulating potentially doing damage, minimally not helping this other alien species. So I liked how we did that kind of reversal play, and I think it actually gives both stories more meaning and nuance by being so close to each other. Next is going to be Just Out of Jupiter's Reach by Nettie Okafor. This story just blew me away. It is the best thing in the Far Reaches collection, just worlds above everything else. Nitty Ogofor is like a master storyteller. I got a little taste for her writing in the Black Stars collection where she wrote the Black Pages. The story was a lot for me and I think that I don't have the right cultural context for it entirely or like the right life experience really. I connected to and related to and really was engaged and interesting with the entire entirety of this story. Beautifully descriptive. It gives an opportunity for Nettie Okafor to display like her ability to do excellent characterization, wonderful description, to explore a lot of different concepts and ideas that have been done before in fantasy science fiction. But she's taking such a unique perspective that I haven't gotten to see before. This is definitely like an immersive experience journey kind of story. I don't want to give too much away of it, but I will say I became very obsessed with periwinkle grass for a hot moment. There is a line in the story that says that periwinkle grass that they are talking about in the story is specifically genetically modified. And when I went to look it up, periwinkle grass isn't something I could find. There's just like a periwinkle flower, which is like this ground covering viney foliage thing with these purple or pink flowers that are star shaped. I believe they're traditionally from Madagascar. They do have a place in traditional medicine and they are used in some cancer treatments now like once purified but it is worth noting that even though they eat periwinkle grass here in this story periwinkle is a toxic plant so um don't do that here in the real world unless I'm mistaken and it's referencing someone something else which you guys let me know in those comments down below if you know more about this reference because I would love to grow me like some normal periwinkle based off of my learning but also this periwinkle grass if it's actually a thing. I personally found the long game a pretty hopeful story and a good turnaround from falling bodies but if you were still like a little bit sad the long game humanity were the oppressors. Here in Just Out of Jupiter's Reach we've gone really like speculative aspirational humanity coming together and exploring exploring the stars and finding themselves kind of moment. Can't help but come out of this story feeling just so happy and hopeful and like, go humanity! And 
And then last is going to be The Slow Time Between Stars by John Skulls. To me this is the weakest in the collection because I've seen exactly this done exactly this way before. It just wasn't unique. If this is your first exposure it's an excellent start to it. It's executed perfectly and I do think like a sentient ship slash artificial intelligence is kind of necessary in a Far Reaches collection so I appreciate its inclusion from that sense as well. Ironically even though this is the shortest story I did find myself getting pretty impatient for it to be over, which is funny considering the spaceship itself talks about how it was built to be patient and do nothing for long stretches of time and humanity is not and it gets very impatient very easily and I was like, yep. I'm manifesting that right now, I'm just waiting for you to get done with this point. And that's going to be every book in the Far Reaches collection. There wasn't a single one here that I didn't like, which I think automatically puts it higher in the ranking list of these Amazon original series. I do think Amazon is getting better at identifying what people are looking for in these individual series and making sure that authors are actually committing to giving them something that both connects to the series and is quality work. But I want to hear from you guys. Have you read this Far Reaches collection? If so, what was your favorite book? Tell me in those comments down below. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep reading. Bye!